Hello, in this video, we will talk about inheritance in Java. In an earlier video on object-oriented concepts, we had briefly explained inheritance, but now we will explain it in much more detail. In OOPS, inheritance can be defined as the process where one class acquires the properties, means variables and methods of another class, like how a child inherits from parents, similar eyes, hair, and maybe money too. Similarly, in OOPS, if you have a parent class like shape, child class can inherit variables and methods from the parent class. In fact, in Java, all classes are derived from a base class object. The parent class from which the child class is derived is called as superclass or base class as well. The child class that is inherited or derived from another class is also called as subclass or a derived class or extended class. In a question, they can use any of these words, so do not get confused if any of these alternative names are used. To show inheritance, you will see the arrow always points from child class to its parent class. The arrow shows the inheritance relationship between the classes or an is a relationship. So it actually represents that circle is a type of shape. So the circle can access shape variable and methods, but shape cannot access anything of the child class. Now, why do we need inheritance in the first place? One of the major reasons is reusability. It allows us to reuse tried and tested existing code and extend it further to our requirements. This helps to save time and reduces errors. Let's now see what are the different types of inheritance. Starting with single inheritance. In single inheritance, Subclasses inherits the features of one superclass. So class A is the base class for the derived class B. Or you can have multi-level inheritance. In multi-level inheritance, a derived class inherits from a base class and the derived class also acts as the base class for other class. So class A serves as the base class for the derived class B which in turn serves as base class for the derived class C. Or you can also have hierarchical inheritance. In hierarchical inheritance, one class serves as the superclass or base class for more than one subclass. In the image shown, class A serves as the base class for derived class B, C and D. There is also multiple inheritance where one class can have more than one superclass and inherit features from all parent classes. Java does not support multiple inheritance with classes. In Java, we can achieve multiple inheritance only through interfaces. Now let's see the syntax of how to implement inheritance by taking an actual class. Let's say we have a class student which has different attributes of student like name, address, date of birth, etc. And it has some methods or behaviors such as attendance, grades, etc. Now, depending upon the subjects, there can be different derived classes like science student, commerce student or art student. So what is the syntax to inherit and define a subclass? For this, you give the subclass name. Let's take science. You use the extends keyword along with the super or base class name when declaring the subclass. So here we have science student as the derived class which extends the base class student. The derived class automatically inherits the basic features of the student from the base class. The derived class can enhance and add their own attributes and methods like a science student could have lab work to do, an art student could have an art portfolio, etc. So does it mean any child can inherit everything of the parent and the parent has no control over it? No. A parent can use access specifiers as to what a derived class can and cannot inherit from a superclass. 
if a parent class declares members without any access specifiers or which is also called default then it can be used by derived classes in the same package only it is not available to any derived class outside the package if you declare members public then all derived classes as well as everybody can access it if you declare a member private it cannot be accessed by the derived class members which are declared as protected can be accessed only by the derived classes now many times as a child we inherit some features which we are not really happy about and we would rather hide it or provide our own implementation of it in oops you can do it by variable hiding or method overriding let's take a student class which has a variable min marks which gives passing marks if the derived class also declares a variable min marks then it would effectively hide the base class marks and only the subclass variable would be used this is called as variable hiding similar feature is available for methods as well and is called method overriding here the base class has a method grades and the derived class writes a function with exactly the same message signature then it hides or overrides the method in the base class and now when the object of derived class calls grades it will call derived class function only but do note while overriding a subclass cannot redefine or change a public method into private and a subclass cannot override static methods of the superclass now what if you have second thoughts and want to use the hidden parent class variables and methods two at times there is still a workaround if you need to access the hidden base class variable or methods you can use super super is used to refer to base or parent class so if you have a base class student and in your derived class you have hidden or overridden some of the parent class variables and methods now if you call super dot marks or super dot grades it will access the base class variables and methods respectively so you can do something called as partial overriding as well if part of the original method implementation from the superclass is retained we refer to the rewrite as the partial overriding now as a parent how do you ensure nobody hides or overrides your stuff for this parent can choose final if you use final while declaring the variables then it makes them constant that cannot be modified or hidden by the child class note but due to this keyword parent also can set its value in the constructor only if the parent declares a method as final then it cannot be overridden by the subclass you can declare your class itself as final if you do not want it to be extended this is many time used to secure your classes from hackers and any unauthorized usage now some key point about the constructor it is never inherited when a subclass constructor is called it will automatically call the default constructor of the superclass first but if you have any parameterized constructor it has no way of automatically calling it so you have to make sure it is the first call in the derived class constructor by calling using keyword super important point to note is that it should be the first statement in the subclass constructor now that we understand inheritance better in our next video we will solve some programming questions on inheritance thank you and all the best